Hey everyone, welcome to Let's Talk. I am Maya. What's up, language learners? I am Ryan, and today we've got a super exciting lesson for you. That's right. We're diving into the world of slang. Specifically, we'll be teaching you seven essential slang words that every English learner should know. Yes, but before we jump in, let's talk about why learning slang is so important. Maya, do you want to kick us off? Absolutely. Learning slang is crucial because it helps you understand native speakers in real life situations. It's the language you'll hear in movies, TV shows, and casual conversations. Exactly. Plus, using slang correctly can make you sound more natural and help you connect with native speakers. It's like having a secret code to fit in. Well said, Ryan. I totally agree with that. Now, let's get started with our first slang word. Yeah, sure. Here's our first word. Slay. Slay. Hmm. Interesting one. Slay means to do something exceptionally well or to look amazing. Yeah. It's used to express that someone has done an outstanding job or looks incredibly good. Of course, Ryan. Let's look at some examples for everyday use, shall we? Sure thing. Here's our first example. Your presentation today absolutely slayed. Listeners, in this sentence, slayed means that the presentation was extremely impressive and successful. Yes. Hmm. It's a way of giving a strong compliment about someone's performance. Perfect. And here's another example. She slays every time she walks into a room. Nice one. This sentence suggests that the person consistently looks stunning or makes a strong impression whenever she enters a room. Yeah, it's like praising her appearance or presence in the room. Well, with that, let's move on to our next slang word, which is low-key. Yeah, low-key. It means subtle, secretive, or restrained, right? Yes, and it's often used when you want to downplay something or express that something isn't widely known or obvious. When someone doesn't want to get noticed, they go low-key. For example, I'm low-key excited about getting that job offer. Here, using low-key means that you are excited but aren't showing it openly or telling everyone about it. Absolutely. It's a way of expressing contained or subtle enthusiasm. Another example would be, this cafe is low-key the best spot in town. In this case, low-key means that the cafe is excellent but it's not widely known or publicized. All right, let's move on to the third slang word. Next up on our list is stan. Have you heard it, Maya? Yes, of course. Stan is both a noun and a verb. It means to be an overzealous or obsessive fan of someone or something. Someone who is obsessed about a celebrity or an influencer, you can call them a stan. Here's how you might use it. I totally stan that new K-pop group. Their music is amazing. In this sentence, stan is used as a verb. It means the person is a huge fan of the K-pop group. Yes, and probably following their activities closely, buying their music, and enthusiastically supporting them. And here's another example. The stans camped outside the venue for days to get front row tickets. In this case, stans is used as a noun referring to extremely dedicated fans who are willing to go to great lengths to support their favorite artist or celebrity. All right, let's move on to our fourth slang word, and that is clap back. Pretty interesting one. Yes, and to clap back means to respond to criticism with a sharp and quick comeback. It's like, it's about delivering a swift response when someone insults or criticizes you. Here's an example. When the customer complained about the service, the waiter clapped back with a sarcastic comment. Wow, can the waiter really do that? I mean, that's what the example says. Well, in this scenario, clapped back means that the waiter didn't just accept the criticism, 
but responded quickly with a sarcastic remark. It was like a bold, defensive reaction. Another example, the politician clapped back at her critics during the press conference. This means that the politician responded forcefully and directly to those who were criticizing her. Well, moving on, at number five on our list is simp. Simp, that's a nice one. A simp is someone who is overly attentive or submissive to another person. Yeah, but typically to someone they're attracted to. They are submissive, often in hopes of winning their affection. It's usually used negatively, am I right? Yes, you are. Here's how it might be used. He's always buying her gifts and agreeing with everything she says. He's such a simp. In this example, calling someone a simp means they're going overboard in their attempts to please someone, often at the expense of their own dignity or self-respect. Here's another example. Stop simping for that celebrity. They don't even know you exist. This sentence is using simp as a verb telling someone to stop obsessing over, or trying to gain the attention of a celebrity who isn't aware of them. Yes, that's perfect. Our sixth slang word is Finsta. Finsta. That's a cool one. It's short for fake Instagram, right? Actually, it refers to a secondary or more private Instagram account where people share more personal or unfiltered content with a smaller trusted audience. Oh, I see. This is how one can use it. I only post my real thoughts on my Finsta. My main account is just for show. Listeners, this sentence shows the dual nature of some people's social media presence. Yeah. For some people, Finsta is like more private space on social media, while their main account is just for everyone. Here's another example. She accepted my follow request on her Finsta, so we must be close friends now. This means if you are being allowed to follow someone's Finsta is a sign of trust or closer friendship, as these accounts are usually more private and selective. With that, let's move on to our last slang word, rent-free. Does it mean that someone is living without paying the rent? Well, not really. When something is living rent-free in your head, it means you're constantly thinking about it, usually in a negative way, without gaining anything from it. Something like an imaginary thought that's staying in your mind without paying any rent, right? Absolutely. Here's an example. That embarrassing moment from high school still lives rent-free in my head. This means you are frequently thinking about an embarrassing high school memory, even though it doesn't mean anything. It's taking up mental space without providing any value. Perfectly said. Here's another example. I can't believe how that rude comment is living rent-free in your mind. Just let it go. This means someone is giving too much importance to negativity and consuming mental energy to something that doesn't deserve it. Yes, that's right. And there you have it, listeners. Seven essential slang words every English learner should know. We hope you found this lesson helpful. Remember, the key to mastering slang is practice and exposure. That's right. Try using these words in your conversations with English-speaking friends. Make them a part of your vocabulary. We shall see you in the next video. Until next time, keep slaying your English learning journey. Hit like and share this lesson with your friends. Until then, you keep learning. And keep practicing English.